Now, the first thing you have to understand is that your body naturally wants to gesture. Just to kind of prove my point, have you ever been on the phone and your hands are gesturing away, but obviously no one can see you, right? We don't think to ourselves, I'm gonna place my hand here and here and here. Your body just naturally does it. Well, the same thing happens when you're giving a presentation. Your body naturally wants to gesture, but sometimes men have a tendency to speak with their hands in their pockets. Now, you probably don't think that this is such a big deal, except that after a while, the energy's gotta come out of somewhere, doesn't it? And they begin to do what we call the chicken, because their arms just kind of start flapping back and forth. Now, if their collar is a little tight or their shirt is a little tight, it will give you a complete rooster effect when you're watching the play back on the tape. Now, my absolute favorites are the gentlemen to play with their keys and fiddle with their change. And after a while, you start wondering just what the heck it is that they're doing down there. Now, ladies are just as bad. Women are constant groomers. Women are constantly touching their hair and playing with their clothes and fiddling with their skirts. And women typically have more energy that runs through their body at any given time than men do. I was working with this one gal. Her name was Jamie. And whenever Jamie would make a really big point with her presentation, she would just kick out her leg. I would be like, oh my gosh. I was like, Jamie, you know what? We really need to watch that leg. And she was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So just a teaser on the playback, I hit fast forward. She was doing a can-can. But the cutest part was is that once she became aware of it, she tried to hold back her leg. And somehow it affected her entire facial expressions. And we had to like revamp her entire body posturing. We have other people who are scared to death to gesture. So they want to keep their hands locked behind their back and then it looks like they're struggling to get away. Or they want to keep their hands locked at their sides and they do what we call the pain because they just gesture from here, which looks weird. And then, of course, there's the ever-popular fig leaf. And sometimes the fig leaf gets exposed, which looks weird. So just little things to think about. And then I have a lot of people who go, oh, my gosh, Terry, you know, that's why I like to speak with a pen in my hand. Because then if I speak with a pen in my hands, then I have something to do. And I was working with this gentleman, nice guy, but he would rest his pen in his pen holder, which was his ear, literally. <laughs> He's sitting on a one-on-one -on -one presentation, dialoguing with a pen sticking out the side of his head. And I said, oh my gosh, James, you know what? We really need to watch that pen. And he goes, that's so weird. I can't believe I did that. I'll never do that again. I'm like, excellent. Next drill, whack, went right back in again. <laughs> Didn't even realize he was doing it. Worked with another gentleman, very sweet man. He would rest his pen in his pen holder, which was his tie. And he would roll it up in his tie and roll it down. <laughs> roll it up his tie and roll it down. So finally, we took the pen away. He had this little dip in his tie where he had been rolling it. But my absolute favorite came from a colleague of ours. His name is Ed Riley. He's so funny. There was a gentleman in his group, apparently, that got so nervous that he would play with the buttons on his shirt. And in the course of his presentation, he had unbuttoned his shirt and he had buttoned it back up again. And he had unbuttoned his shirt and buttoned it back. We had no idea if he was coming or going. <laughs> And the funny thing is, is you can just imagine he was like looking at the playback going, oh my gosh, how long have I been doing that? <laughs> you know, and while it's kind of humorous to laugh at all of this, the truth of the matter is, is that it reveals a real lesson. And that is once a year, gang, once a year, get your presentation on videotape so that you can see and hear yourself as your clients do. And then you can put on those little finishing touches in terms of building the presentation and then really augmenting the delivery so that you can hear how you speak, look at the the way that you sound, and then create some little tiny changes. It's usually nothing as horrific and, and overwhelming as people think it is.